Hello everybody. You know what? This video is going to show you some tips on handling fonts in your apps. Some people are having a little bit of frustration with, you know, getting their font sizes and their font in general looking consistent. And so I wanted to show you a couple of tips and especially show you how you can use a slider. Um, the cool thing about the slider is that you can give it to your consumer. So it doesn't have to be the app maker that's in control of the text size. And so let me show you what I did to get started just to save a few minutes is I, I have a list in SharePoint that has job descriptions. And basically it just has a job title and a description. So a single line of text and plain text um, on the description multi-line. And then I just, uh, from there, I just used the drop down and said create an app um, just because I wanted uh, everything. I wanted gallery, detail, and form. If I just wanted a form, I could do customized forms, but I'm, I did the whole thing. And then I didn't do much here. I just took away the fields I didn't want to see. Um, I didn't even change my uh, search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the search, which is something I do all the time. So kind of point that out to you. And then I'm going to put all three of these on one landscape screen. And, and then we're going to start talking about text. But I figured I'd let you see me do this because you might want to do this yourself when you're generating apps directly from SharePoint. So first thing I'm going to do um, is, of course, I want to set the layout to how many fields I want to see here. And then I want to set the field to title. Um, and that's because my title has my job title in it. Um, but the next thing I want to do is go up into my search and use that title field for search as well as sorting. So all I'm going to do is change this compliant asset ID to title. And then um, same thing over here. Um, this second one is for the sort by columns. That first one is for the filter. All right, then I'm gonna put title here. And now um, basically this is gonna search correctly. And so usually what I'll do after I do a change like that is I'll double check by just playing it and then typing a word. I'm gonna type engineer because that should be in, well, this is using starts with. So let's try program. And that works fine. Okay, developer. And uh, there's is there anything starting with development? Okay, development. Okay, and see that works fine. Now it starts with so I can't type engineer. Just to let you know, you can change that. Just just make it especially in a list like this that's going to have less than. I mean, there's going to be less than a hundred jobs available at any given time in this list. So I don't have to use starts with, um, I can use equals. It will give me a little blue underscore because of delegation. Um, but I'm not worried because I know there's less than a hundred items going to be in this list. This list is never going to be in the area of a thousand. So I can get away with using equals. Um, oh, I don't want to use equals. I actually want to use in, right? Um, which means that it's somewhere in that search box. So let's just double check. So we're filtering where jobs, where the title is in search box text. Let's do it the other way. Search box text and title. And yeah. We get the little blue underscore, but at least we're getting things back. Not sure why they're not showing up. Okay. See, we have two responses. Oh, it might have removed my title field. Let's check. Let's go into our form property. Let's go into jobs. Yeah, it changed my, so I'm not sure why it did that, but I'm gonna put it back to title and I will let somebody know that that happened. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep moving along here. 
So I know this works. So I'm going to go in here and type engineer now. And you'll see because I'm using in, I can take I can type anything here. But keep in mind that in is underscored in blue in the formula bar because it is um, not supported by delegation. So if you had more than 500 items in this list, you would have potentially wrong information returned. So you want to be careful um, to think about which controls you can use with delegation. And I, and I went off on a tangent. OK, so now let's put all this on one screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is save that change. And then I'm going to go to App Settings and change the screen size and orientation to landscape. So that you can, this will be broad. And then I'm going to go back. And now this is all, you know, what I meant by broad is landscape. And I'm just going to slide this over here. I'm going to copy this guy. So I'm going to take this form, which I use the breadcrumb down here. Control C simply. Hope you all caught the blog that now you can copy and paste from one app to another. If you didn't catch that, that was a big one. That's in our blogs for last week. I'm just going to put that there. Okay, put that there. And then um, take the last one. And control C, control V to put that. So now I basically have everything on one screen. Okay. And the only reason I wanted to put everything on one screen is because it's easy for me to show you these little tricks. All right. You can see it happening everywhere, which is the beauty of it. Because people are saying, you know, hey, I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to have to modify every little thing on this screen. This is being time consuming. So this is what we're addressing here. So I'm just taking the, the three forms, putting on the same screen. Now, I don't need this Chevron anymore. So I'm going to get rid of it. Um, as far as the new item, uh, I could make it invisible until I click this. But again, I want to show you things changing live. So I'm going to leave it there and make the default um, mode uh, new. Well, no, I'll leave the default mode edit because we're not going to do that much new. All right, so now that's all there. Now, um, let's just run this and make sure it's still OK. I don't know what that description is in the middle. I might be facing a little bug, so I might change browsers. Um, let's see, development. Let's run this. Change it to this one, program manager. All right, let's try and remove the uh, link to item. That's something I usually add, but I'm going to take it out. So I'm just going to click on that card and press delete. So I don't have to open the panel for that. And then let's let's play our points. I'm not going to worry about this right here because I don't know what's going on. And good thing you see it because sometimes I think I'm going crazy. So. I'm going to move this down a little bit, and I'm going to move this down a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to actually set this. I'm going to put a hint text here so that this, this knows it's only searching um, the gallery, but I can actually have it respond in many of them. So I'm going to change the hint text here, hint text. To search job titles. This way you know you're only searching job titles, right? Okay. All right. Then I'm going to say Control S and then I'm going to go back to my object browser because I'm going to hang out in there for a while. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this very first font here as my driving font. So 
um, everything that that is in this app will have the same font as this header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this font, which I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm going to, I think it's Segui. I'm going to make this font Segui UI, excuse me, Segui UI. All right. And then I'm going to name that control a little bit differently. So right now it's named, you can see it over here, label app name one. I'm going to edit that and just put the word style at the end. So I'm going to tell you why I do that. Whenever I'm going to use a control for styling, you know, I'm going to use a reference to it a lot. I will put the word style in its name at the end. And what this enables me to do in the format, in the, in the control area over here, is type style and get all of my style formatting in one place. Now, in other videos, you showed me make a palette on my last screen, and you can totally do that. Um, you've also seen me use variables for this, which in some cases is even better. And the reason is because I remember that I use this style format, and unless I document that some, somewhere, nobody else will. So if somebody picks up this app from me, right, they might not know what I did. So whenever I, you know, plan to give it to somebody else, I might use a variable instead. And basically all I would do is on the first screen or on start, either way, I would tell the visible property to, and on start is probably better, but I'm going to tell you the difference. The visible property, I'm going to, I can set a variable for fonts, right? So I can set a variable called font and I'll just call it bar font, that way I can tell it when I see it. And then in here, put in quotes, Sugui UI. The beauty of using a variable over what I was just doing, I'm sorry, I'm using set, this is global, so I don't need a semicolon and I don't need squigglies, kind of a habit I got from update context. All right, so, Basically, now, if I put this in the on start, um, when this app opens, no matter what screen it opens to, it will set that variable to Segoe UI. Then I would actually, instead of putting that there, I would put the variable name there, which is fine. Um, let's do that together so you can see how that works. Because in a way, it's better. Um, because it's obvious to another person that would be building this app. Um, so when I go there, I'm going to just type the name of the variable, which is bar font, and that will set the font of that. Now I can use var font all over this app anywhere I want. And if I want to change the font, I could just change that variable. Okay. But in that case, I would put it in the on start as opposed to the on visible. That way it'll work all over the app, not just in this screen, because the on visible is just for this screen. But also, if you were to jump to a certain screen in this app, like say you went to, um, you had a parameter from a different app that jumped into screen number three. Um, if you use on visible screen number three, if it doesn't have that property, it won't load it. So on start, make sure that no matter what, um, no matter what screen they start in, they will still get that variable font. They will still get that variable. And so when I'm making an app, I'll do both. And the reason why I do both is because on start is a little annoying for me to test because I have to save and close the app and reopen it because on start only works even in design mode when you open the app brand new. So sometimes I want to test more dynamically. So I'll put it in on visible for testing. But you don't you can remove it from on visible before you publish it to somebody. Okay, so that's just setting the font. Now I will can still keep the style in there in case I want to refer to that because that is where I set the font for the whole um for everything and so I can still change the font there for everything if I want to use the style. But I'm going to take it up a, a notch and use the variable to change the font. 
Okay. Now, what about the font size? All right. Um, let's first change everything to that font. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to font on this one. And I'm going to make sure it is also var font. Of course, I, I could also do label app name, label app name style. See, I can actually type style when I want to share styles between controls because it'll pull up all of the styles and I can choose the one that I made. All right. And then I can just say font here. So I can do that too. I can refer to the font from the top of the screen. In this case, though, I'm going to encourage you to use a variable. So I'm going to use their font. Um, and so now that's the font. Now on galleries, this is really easy. I can just get in there to my first gallery item and go ahead and set that font to var font as well. So I'm setting that font to var font as well. And that kind of does it for my for my gallery. Now if I had other controls in here, um, you can, I'm gonna control C, control V, so I end up with two controls. If you control A inside of a gallery template, it will select all the controls in that template, which is good enough because um, when you change the template row in a gallery, it changes everything else, right? But where people get like a little bit like, wait a minute, this is, this is time consuming, is when they get into forms. And so right here I have an edit form, and over here I have... I mean, this is the details form and this is an edit form, right? And so I can't just go to font for this whole thing. There actually is not a font variable for the whole form. Okay, we've got some complaints about that. So what you have to do is you have to just click on the controls in each card. And again, because you're inside the card, you can control A. To, to, to highlight all the controls in the card. I'm gonna unlock this just to make sure that this takes. So I go over to the advanced and click unlock. And then I'm going to set the font for both of those. Hold that one second. I'm gonna set the font for both of these. So I'm gonna go over to font, F-O-N-T. Sorry, I got a little bit of mouse issue here. Font. All right. And then I'm going to change this. I know my unlock isn't working, so don't worry about that. I'm going to change this to var font. All right, so now they're both var font. Then I can go to my next card, which is description. I'm hoping that when I change the font here, it'll kind of fix itself. We noticed. I noticed that there's a little bit of a problem there. I'm going to go into the card, sorry, and control A to make sure I have everything and unlock that. Not working, so that's okay. I'm going to go into the font property and do var front font. All right, and then I'll just, I don't really need the modified, so I'll get rid of that. And then I'm going to do the same thing in this control. Control A. And then go to the font. And then let's change this to bar font. Now, this is, you know, like you, you are doing a little bit of selections because you can't select uh, multiple cards at the same time, but at least you're only going to do this the first time, like when you first build your form. After this, you'll be changing the variable as opposed to clicking on each and everything, right? Okay, so now, no matter what, everything is going to be um, to GUI UI because it's all set to var front font. Now, um, I think I did put this in the visible property. Yes, and this is going to help for me for test. So I'm just going to insert a new screen so I can jump away from this screen and come back. 
because the on visible launches when you change screens, right? So I'm going to set this variable to, let's pick a different font. I don't know them. Open, let's change it. Let's change it to a font that's kind of funky so you can see. So I am going to just click on anything just so I can see the list of fonts. And let's do Patrick Hand. I don't even know about that one. Patrick Hand. Let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my invisible property of this screen. Sorry, I still have to get off of that. Go to the screen on visible and set this to Patrick Hand. Again, if I had opened this app with an on start, it would automatically change. But because I'm, you know, I'm I'm in the mode of this app right now, I'm going to force that on visible to, to launch by changing screens and coming back. Okay, and you can see that everything is now Patrick Han, right? So you can see how this could be useful if you were trying to like make it easy to make changes. And sometimes font changes can be kind of a variable, right? Now you can have like relationships between these variables too. So first thing I'm going to do is not use Patrick Han because I think it looks really bad. So I'm going to use go back to using go e ui was that right let's look at my i want to look at my i don't know how to spell these things that's terrible so i'm going to go to the font drop down here and just check s e g o e yeah that's right all right then i'm going to bounce away from this screen and come back and that'll take it back into where we had it all right so now everything is back to being Segui UI. Now, what about size? Um, Sometimes I like to make size um, very dynamic. You can do that in a couple of ways. So I want to show you one fun way I like to manage size. So I'm just going to move this out of the way so I can put a slider right here. So I'm going to insert a slider, slider control. So I know you were waiting for this the whole time. All right. Um, so here's our slider control, and I'm going to put it over here, nice and neat in this area over here. Um, and I'm going to change, well, I might, if I'm going to use my finger, like, so if this is planned for a tablet app, I might leave it that big because, you know, you want it to be very finger friendly, no matter how big your finger is. Um, but I'm going to put a tool tip on this for desktop that's going to say, slide to change font size okay and i'm going to leave it there for my user right but right now i'm going to set the minimum property of this because i don't want them to do something silly right this is for a tablet i think veronica suggested a minimum of 14 for tablets and so let's give it a maximum um we definitely want don't want a font a, a size 100 so I'm going to say 24 is my maximum, okay? And then as the default, default, I am going to set it at, let's just set a default of eight, of eight, of, let's say it's 14, okay? So it's kind of at the end, all right? Um, okay, so now I'm going to set this size for job descriptions, which is my style um, control, I'm going to set the, st the size of it to the slider. I guess I should have defaulted to 27 then, right? Slider one dot value. And then I will default this to 27. Well, Default it to 27. Okay. Now, show you what I'm going to do. So, I'm defaulting that to 27. What did I make the maximum? That looks like way over to the right. Let's see. What did I make the maximum? The maximum is 24, so that's too small. Let's make this 32. Okay, so now that there's a little space there to the right. 
All right. So how is this going to work? Right. So this is now 27 points because it's the current value of the slider. I'm going to go into here and take development. And I'm going to make the size of this. And again, I can totally use a variable here, but I'm just going to do it literally right now. But you got the idea of how to use a variable. You can use a variable too. So you could set a variable in that same start menu. And you could say slider one value is the default font size, right? Set var size slider one value, right? You could totally do that. But I'm going to do something also here where I'm going to do a minus. So I'm going to do take whatever is in the in that value there and minus four, right? So we've got that a little bit smaller, right? Let's try two. All right, so now we got that a little bit smaller than um, what the slider is. I'm going to go with four, all right? And because I know we're missing some words there, I'm actually going to go with six, all right? Then I'm going to set the width of this control to be the template width and align it left so that it takes up that whole space and we can see that whole thing. Um, I think the other thing I will do is give it some padding. I might make it auto height and I might put some padding in here so that there's always something at the left, but you get it, what I'm doing here. The padding happens within the control, by the way. The control is still flush left. All right. All right. So now, um, that's the gallery. Now on this one, I might make it a little bit smaller still, right? So let's go into this card and I'm going to select all and I'm going to go into the size of this. So size, and I'm gonna also use the slider here. Again, I could definitely use my slider in a variable, but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of time right here. And I'm going to make this even smaller. So I'm going to make this minus six, right? Which will make it smaller than the gallery on the left. Okay. But it's relative to the gallery of the left. So it's, it's always going to be nice and consistent as to how you go down in font size as well. Now I can always make the title a little bit smaller even. So maybe that one would be slider value minus eight, okay? I can do that kind of thing. I'm gonna go into this card here, I'm gonna select all, and I'm going to make this one, I'm gonna go into the font, I think I forgot to do it, var font, and then on the size, I'm going to do slider, right, slider, one value minus six, right? And then I'm gonna take just description and because it's acting a little funky right here, which I'm not worried about at this moment, it might be a bug in my environment. We are in test environments here at Microsoft sometimes, so that could be what's going on here. So I'm going to get all my objects back by removing my search, and then I'll be able to see this description data card and hit that control right there. And size is slider value minus six. What did I make the slider value over here? I made it uh, minus eight. So this one, I want to make it a little bit smaller and I make it minus eight. Now, if we notice, my cards are too wide to... And that's probably because, well, only the title is too white. Let's go ahead and make that smaller and see if it fixes the little black blackness. And it does not, but I'm not worried about it. It's, it's not part of this, it's not a concern here. It's just probably a bug in my tenant. All right, so then I'm gonna select both of these and uh, set their size in the same way. So the size of this is going to be slider 
one dot value dot um, minus six. And then um, I think I said these are going to be minus eight. So I'm going to add the minus eight to this one. So I set them both first. That way when I, you know, go back in, but you can do it in any order you want. The good thing is you're only doing this once. You don't have to do this every time your boss says to change the font. After you set it up the first time, you're all good. You're all good, right? So next time when he wants to make this, you can size change for, for days. And actually, I did a really cool thing in one of my other projects where I actually put the sizes on SharePoint and had it look up there. That way, if they wanted to change the size, they could go change it in the list, right? And it would change it in the app when the app opens. Okay, so because this is this is data friendly, so I can connect this to a configuration list on SharePoint. I don't necessarily recommend you do that right now until you know we get a little bit faster because you might have some weird responses if it's slow but later on you can do that all right so i'm going to do a control s to save all that and then let's give it a try so um just going to take this slider and slide it down and notice that everything on my screen it's changing at the same time. By the way, notice the header is changing, right? Because we set that for the slider value. But it's doing in the, in the increments that we set it, right? And that's how easy that is. So um, the only reason I wanted to show you this is because a couple of people have asked about making these things more consistent, and I wanted to help you out with that. I hope this is useful to you, and I hope you have a wonderful week. And I'll be talking to you soon on the next Friday Functions video. Take care.